，你会为此付出代价。请注意，一之力。柳绵飞终于施展在你。Hey guys, Mr. Pookie here, back with another video. So, if you guys have watched my previous CN unit analysis on Locha, uh, you may have picked up that I said something about this. You have to consider the longevity of a healer class in general, right? Because it is very easy for any healer to get replaced because there has already been plenty of zero turn clears where you clear the enemy before they even do any sort of damage to your team, right? In that scenario, uh, you don't really need healers that much. So eventually, if we were to reach a point in the game where our relic and team is developed so strong where you can kill the enemy team without relying on heals, then uh, not just watch out, but any sort of healer 5 stars is going to face the issue. Yeah, so that is essentially what today's content is going to be about. Today, we're going to be discussing the viability of full DPS lower chart, right? Uh, I've really looked into some of the CN theory crafts behind this, and I'll say that this build is generally not as widely uh, viable compared to the break effect Zero Wolf, where it's essentially an early game build that a lot of people can utilize. So with that out of the way, let's get into today's content. So the very first thing that I want to talk about is the disclaimers of this build, right? And the most important part of this entire build is that this is an endgame build, right? Luochar and his team that supports DPS Luochar requires serious investments for their relics and traces uh, because this reduces the healing requirement for the entire team and increases Luochar's damage output to a threshold where we can still clear uh, MOC with relative ease, right? This is definitely not for players in uh, in the early game unless you are a will that have already done max stamina refreshes just like the CN wills, right? So they are not for players who are still struggling with MOC with his healing uh, as a normal healer. So if your low char with his normal healing still cannot sustain your team, then this build is definitely not for you. And I would say that this is going to be the case for the majority of players pulling low char. So that's number one. Number two, damage potential. So earlier on, I've showcased some of the damage potentials done by low char and by the CN brooch, right? Uh, it showcased one E6 low char with a full E6 team as well as an E2 low char. Uh, both of them, they have his signature light cone equipped, right? So this damage potential is with a full support team, right? They all use three harmony characters or two harmony characters with one nihility characters. So all their supports will invest their skill points into Locha. And Locha's basic plus auto E will sustain the team until his ultimate is up, right? So you gotta keep in mind uh, whatever kind of big big numbers you see on the internet, all this kind of stuff, uh it is definitely not from Locha alone. He still needs uh proper supports just like any other main DPS, you wanna support him, right? So that is the two disclaimers I wanna say about this build. Alright, so the theory behind DPS Locha. Uh, very similar to Break Effect Silver Wolf, we first need to see that Locha needs to fulfill his primary objective, which is to provide sufficient healing for our team. Uh, just like Silver Wolf's primary objective is to mark the enemy weakness, Locha's primary objective is to make sure that he still does his job as a healer, right? Now, how can we ensure that DPS Locha's healing still keeps up with any normal uh, healer build that we run on Locha, right? Uh, that's because Locha heals skills incredibly well with attack percentage while having the highest base attack in the entire game, right? His attack stats at level 80 is 756, which is the highest in the game, just like Nimiko. If we were to stack too much attack percentage on him, there will be way too much heal, especially on his E skill, right? Because usually when the E skill triggers at 50% HP, it is almost guaranteed that Locha will be able to heal the ally to full health um, at 50% HP. That's why stacking too much attack percentage on Locha or too much healing on Locha is not going to be uh, viable on his E. We're not going to talk about this healing field first, that's something for later on. So yeah, the main idea behind this build, it is to future-proof Locha. It is not suggesting that um, Hyper Carry or main DPS Locha is better than the pure healer Locha, right? Because, like I mentioned in my previous video again, that much. So eventually, if we were to reach a point in the game where our relic and team is developed so strong, where you can kill the enemy team without relying on heals, then uh, not just Locha, but any sort of healer 5 stars is going to face the issue. Yeah, so like I mentioned in my previous video, uh, if healers get outclassed in the end game and we only want DPS to clear MOC as soon as possible uh, without taking any damage, then at least Locha can still make use of this DPS build to pivot into a DPS himself, right? So he himself as a healer is not going to become benched for the rest of the game if we come to a situation where we don't need healers for MOC anymore. 
Uh, this is of course not including the fact that uh, MiHoYo might throw out some additional content where basically it forces us to use a healer. I'm just talking about right now because from what I see in the current content, MOC has really gotten to a stage where worlds can easily zero turn clear MOC stages, right? Zero turn clear, one turn clear, and most of these clears they really do not require any sort of healers, right? So worlds are kind of like the future scope of where this game is going to be, and if you can see that. Uh, for those zero turn clear, one turn clear videos, if it's something that we can achieve as the general player base uh, without spending too much money and Mihoyo doesn't increase the difficulty of MOC, then there really is not much news for a healer. But if we were to able to pivot Locha into a DPS himself, then all those stellar jades spent on pulling Locha will not be go to waste because you can still use him in future MOC content. So that's the theory behind DPS Locha. Now, the build itself. Um, the build is definitely viable at E0, uh, but it's going to be even better if there's more iron levels, right? Because E1 gives you an attack buff, E2 allows him to overheal with his E, and E6 is the huge minus 20% all damage rest for the enemy's team. So E0 is viable, but E6 is going to be even better, right? So to get a look at the build, we're going to be running Way Standard of Banditry Desert set, which is the imaginary set, uh, Inert Sao Soto, Light Cone, we're going to be running his signature Light Cone, or any 5-star Light Cone, Gacha Light Cone, not Hurta Shock with the highest flat attack, such as Himeko's uh, Knight of the Milky Way or Yan Cheng's Sleep Red Dead, all these kind of light cones, they have the highest base attack flat stacks, which is 582, right? Uh, for Relic main stats, for Boots, Chest, Rope and Orb, we're going to be running Attack Percentage, Crit Chance, Energy Regeneration, as well as Imaginary Damage. And lastly, for Relic subsets, it's pretty self-explanatory. You just build him as if any DPS, all in for Crit Chance and Crit Damage as high as possible. Uh, if you can't really get those crit chance and crit damage, then any subsets going into speed or attack percentage will also be beneficial. So that is the build at a glance. Now, the reason behind this build. Um, ready sets, first of all. Imaginary set, which is the bandit set, it gives the highest DPS across any other set for Locha. Uh, there is 40 crit value because you get 10 crit chance when attacking a debuffed enemy and 20% crit damage when attacking an imprisoned enemy. So this 40% crit, crit value is going to be very very important for Locha. And considering that he is an imaginary unit, there is a chance for him to inflict uh, imprison. So the 40 crit value will gain full effect when using it with Locha, right? Uh, for Sao Soto, because it's pr also pretty self-explanatory, there's a crit rate increase as well as the ultimate damage increase. And for Locha, the majority of our damage is going to be coming from our auto attack and our ultimate. So something that increases our ultimate damage is always going to be uh, beneficial for us. The CM Bros are choosing Inner Sao Soto over Space Station because as we know, Locha already has a very very high attack on itself because of an extremely high base attack and we're still going to be running attack percentage boots as well as some form of attack percentage from his substats and his tracers. So we don't really need Space Station that much. Furthermore, we're also not going to be running speed boots. So achieving 120 speed with Locha is going to be a little bit more problematic. So that's that. So for his light cone, the signature light cone is pretty self-explanatory. All his stats are used by Locha. The attack buff is going to be useful. The energy regeneration is going to be helping him hit ultimate every two turns with auto E. And the T-Moy speed buff will allow the supports to provide him with more damaging buffs, such as Bronya's buff, Tingyun's buff, all these kind of good buffs, right? Uh, other than his signature light cone, 5 star offensive light cone is going to be our ideal situation instead of any other abundance light cone because 5 star offensive light cone it gives Locha the highest attack, right? It's 5 2. No other 5 star abundance light cone can give Locha a 5 2 base attack. On top of that, abundance light cones generally don't have any offensive abilities for Locha to use, right? Because most of their effect is going to be increasing your healing, increasing your energy, increasing like your effect rest, all this kind of stuff. There really isn't any like DPS factors, so it's okay for us to just dump the low stats and lack of damaging abilities from an abundance light cone and instead transition into a 5 star offensive light cones from either the hunt, erudition, nihility or destruction units right so that is the rationale behind the light cone now for relic main stats as mentioned in my previous video Locha really only needs one attack percentage main stat to function as a healer with this one attack percentage main stat alone his attack will definitely be enough to allow his auto E to heal our target back to full health at 50% health so where to allocate this attack percentage main stat we're gonna be forsaking speed why are we forsaking speed boots uh, and we choose the attack, right? It is because if we're going to be playing Locha as a DPS, the addition of supports will definitely help with his turn cycle, such as Bronya and Tingyun. Uh, previously, for a normal Locha, we want speed boots on him because majority of the time, we're not going to be using all those um, supports dumping his skills on Locha. But since right now Locha can be our main DPS, it is okay for us to reduce his speed just for him to increase his damage and the lack of speed can be made up from other supports such as Bronya and Tingyun. So that's number one. Uh, number two, uh, we're still going to be using energy regeneration rope to increase his out out time because without energy regeneration rope then Locha can only out every three turns and the majority of DPS's Locha damage is going to be coming from his out so we still need uh, ER rope. Imaginary damage percentage as well as crit chance they're pretty self-explanatory because they are the highest increase in Locha's DPS compared to say both attack percentage right because crit chance is always going to be important and we already have way too much attack percentage so 
imaginary damage percentage is also going to be uh, be more beneficial for DPS. Uh, lastly, for Radix subset, there really is not much to explain. As mentioned previously, all DPSs will want to get crit ratio as high as possible, and if unable to get this, any sort of speed or attack also help Lorcha as well. Right? So that is the rationale behind the build. Okay, so the pros behind this build, right? Number one, it fulfills its primary objective, which is always going to be something that we need to look at when trying to come up with some crazy theory crafts, right? Because uh, going back into Break Effects Evil Wolf again, she still can fulfill her primary objective of marking the enemy's weakness uh, on top of now dealing more break damage. For Locha, it's the same because he can still perfectly sustain his team using this build with Auto E, right? Because we have our attack percentage main stat, and Locha can still perfectly sustain his team with this build using Auto E, right? There's no healing pressure on Locha at all. Coming to this point, some of you might ask, Mr. Poki, what about his healing field, right? Because his healing field scaling is really, really small. Uh, I'm going to get into that point a little bit later and you can see why the healing field won't be our concern for now. So let's just go forward. Uh, so the second point for his pros is that we're going to be future-proofing because in future units, when healers get phased out due to the improved lyrics and gears, like I mentioned in my previous video, Rocha can now pivot from a healer to a main DPS and still clear MOC. Uh, why I say this future proving is such an important point for Lorcha right, is because going forward into the future, when we have better gears, better relics, we're not really going to require that much shields on our team because, I mean, Ting Yun right now, she's super super squishy because I don't think anybody has found enough good sets on her yet. But uh, going into the future, when we have more HP, more survivability, more speed, this will help our entire team survive better. And then with increased damage of uh, relics and tracers, it's going to output more damage so the enemies will survive lesser, which in turn reduces the damage pressure on our team as well. That's why I say Losha can pivot from a healer to a main DPS, even doing a main DPS build, because at that point of the game, in the end game, uh, we really don't need that much healing anymore, so we can make use of Losha's damage capabilities while still providing a moderate amount of healing for our team. Right. Our last move for Losha is gonna be Fluidity, because he can essentially act as a damage dealer for most team cops, right? Ranging from Triple Harmony, Harmony Slash Nihility, Mono Imaginary Team, as well as Imaginary Slash Quantum Team. So this goes to show that Rocha's main DPS doesn't really need to stick to that one specific team that is used for the CM Bros. As long as he can make sure that he can keep his team alive while dealing tons of damage himself, then um, the Fluidity is gonna be a very very big benefit for us going into the late game. Now with all the pros aside, there are definitely some cons that we have to consider with building DPS Lorcha. Right? And the first of all, and the very very biggest con, is investment heavy. DPS Lorcha's build is a complete opposite of Break Effect Silver Wolf, right? This is meant to be an endgame focused build that can only be accomplished in the future. The current player basis account's development should still be using a normal healer build. So why do I say this? Because right now in MOC, I'm pretty sure majority of player base still haven't really cleared 30 out of 30 stars for MOC yet. And the number one issue for the reason is because we don't have enough survivability, right? We might have enough damage, but if our team can't survive, then we just cannot clear MOC 10. So in this early game, where our relic is just not there, our main defense's gear is not there, our crit value is not there, and the rest of our support's health and durability is just really really low, Lorcha's healing needs to be as high as possible, including his field, so that he can provide enough survivability for our entire team. We are in no position to build Lorcha as the main DPS right now, because if our team still can't even survive with Lorcha, then uh, his primary objective is basically useless, right? He cannot keep the team alive. So in our current stage of the game, we really really want Lorcha to be sticking to the normal healer based team, only go into the end game, then can we pivot into a DPS build. Number two, this DPS Lorcha is kind of relying on his signature light cone because the signature light cone is the only way where we can ensure Lorcha has a auto attack, auto attack into an auto E out cycle, right? If we do not use Lorcha's signature light cone, then we need to use external energy sources such as getting hit, getting kills, and getting an energy battery. Although this point is not that bad compared to healer Lorcha because since we're now playing DPS Lorcha, it's very likely for us to get kills with his ultimate, right? So at least this point is not that bad compared to healer Lorcha. Number 3, the field heal decrease, like I mentioned just now, right? Um, this will impact his primary objective if our team is not strong enough to survive with the weaker field heals. This is also tied to investment heavy team, and that's why I say this build is only for the end game. In the end game, if your team can survive long enough while dealing high enough damage, then the reduction in the field heal provided by Locha is not going to be that important because the enemy is dead, right? But in an event where uh, we build DPS Locha, but our team is not even strong enough to survive the enemy's damage uh, with his lower field heal, then we definitely cannot build DPS Locha because this clashes with his primary objective, which is to ensure that the team stays alive, right? So that's the point number 3. Now the last con is going to be Eidolon benefits. Although this build works at E0, but Lorcha's damage capabilities will vastly increase at E1 and E6, right? So this will reduce Lorcha's relic quality and this might make building DPS Lorcha a little bit harder for players because even though it can work at E0, the amount of stamina required to invest into an E0 Lorcha DPS uh, is going to be much higher compared to like an E1 or E6 Lorcha, right? So that's going to be another factor to consider for the player base. 
this whole DPS Lochar, right, it is an end game pivoting and future proving idea. Right? DPS Lochar, being a direct contrast to Break Effect Silver Wolf, is a build meant for the players to consider only in the get end game. I cannot stress this enough because I I know for sure somebody in the comments is gonna say, oh my god, why are you recommending DPS Lochar? He's so bad right now. Uh, he's not keeping anybody alive. He's not doing enough damage. So I really really hope to get this point across. Uh, this DPS Lochar build is only for the end game, right? Where the healing requirement is lower and the DPS requirement is higher. In the end game, this build will age better with time, whereas compared to Break Effect Silver Wolf, uh, she's gonna fall off more into the end game when our relics improve, right? This will allow Locha to have a much longer lifespan than other healers, right? We're comparing with like Bairo and Natasha, who lack attack percentage scaling as well as an ultimate not doing damage. Now for Locha as an attack scaling healer, as well as an ultimate that can deal damage, it allows him to stay more future-proof than other healers in the event that we don't need as much shields anymore. That's why I say this is purely for future-proofing Locha, right? Right now, as of this current point where I made this video, uh, it's a July 2nd, uh, it's roughly two months into the game, players' main priority should still be building their proper main DPS, like such, such as your Sile, your Jingyuan, your Well, your Dunheng, your Shu Sheng, uh, whichever hunt erudition destruction on the Hility class, right? Before even considering upgrading Lotus DPS capabilities. So for now, uh, investing your resources into a proper proper main DPS from any of the four classes above, uh, while still investing Locha as a normal healer, will allow you to clear MOC much easier. Right? Only going forward into the future, when your team is already strong enough, your support is tankier enough, and you don't want Locha to be completely benched, then you can start pivoting into our DPS Locha build. So TLDR in summary, uh, it is a build meant for the end game, extremely extremely good for the end game because it basically makes him become future proof and probably the most future proof healer that we have. Uh, and it's not a build that is meant for the early game. So with that, we come to the end of today's content. And just to repeat this one last time, DPS Locha is meant for an end game build. It is not meant for players to build him right now. Uh, for the majority of player base, uh, you can just keep this video in mind. Uh, six months later, you can come back to this video again and know how to build a proper DPS Locha in the event that you don't need that much shields anymore. So that's all for today, and I'll see you guys next time. Take care.